Hey Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm bringing you Nichols Worth and for the first time in the comfort print to my knowledge, Thomas Nelson has brought the Apocrypha in with the King James. Now I know they did like a reprint of the 1611 and they've done the RSV like back in the 1960s, but Thomas Nelson including the Apocrypha and any other translations is a big step and it's something really cool that a lot of people have been asking for. Well, here it is, so let's check it out. Now, the reason I have this one in here, this is the New King James Classic Reference Bible. And I just wanted to kind of show you a comparison between the layout of this one and this one because they're very similar. But let's start with the cover. First of all, really nice cover. I love the grain. The grain does look a little too perfect for me to be natural, so I've got a feeling this is stamped. Don't quote me on that, but I'm going to call this a stamped grain. Still very nice leather, very floppy, excellent. It has two ribbons. These ribbons are gold and black. Really nice ribbons. Thomas Nelson always does a very good job on their ribbon choices and their colors. So now let's take a look at the spine. This is excellent as well. It has five raised hubs encased in gold foil stamping, and then it has the Holy Bible, lets you know the Apocryphus with it. It's the King James, and of course it's published by Thomas Nelson. On the back, hmm, they put the ISBN number on the cover. I've never liked that, but you know what? It's not a big deal. It's just something that kind of annoys me. But anyhow, now let's go ahead and look at the liner. The liner is vinyl. Very excellent. Really like these vinyl liners because like paper, they will not tear. They're a little more secured. I cannot tell if there's any reinforcement tape there. It doesn't mean it's not there. Sometimes it's very difficult to detect, but even if it's not, this is much better than a paper liner. This is available in a leather soft. It's got a little bit more ornate on the cover, but it is going to have that paper liner. So it is going to be one that will wear out a little more quickly than this. The gold gilding looks really good pretty even. They always do a really nice job on this. So now let's take a look at the text block. Okay, here we are. Now this is going to struggle to lay flat a bit, but it's not bad at all. And you can see similarities between the classic reference in the New King James and then the center column reference in the King James. The only difference is this is an 11 point font. This is a nine and a half point font. I'm assuming they made this a little smaller to accommodate for the Apocrypha because as you can tell, this is not a whole lot thicker. As a matter of fact, it's exactly the same thickness and it's about the same size. So when you consider that to be able to get more text in a block that's about the same size, then you're going to need to make it a little bit smaller of a font. Even though the New King James does have a slightly larger word count, I don't think it's going to factor that much. So it has narrow margins here. Now I'll, I'll explain that in a second too just like this has very narrow margins here so you're only going to get like maybe six to eight maximum words per line but the verse numbers are nice and bold they're going to be very easy to find in a verse by verse format so you're going to be able to follow those verses all the way down just like this guy here i do like that these are accented because they're much easier to spot but you know what it's not real hard when they make these good and bold so you have your references here and you have your notes here as well so when we get into the poetic settings, let's take a quick look at that. We go into the Psalms. These are right justified, where this one is censor justified. I actually prefer them to be right justified because they don't look as kind of wonky. As a matter of fact, you really can't tell the difference between the poetic settings and the prose or story narrative settings because they are right justified like this. So really excellent. Now, let's get to what everyone is wanting to see, and that is the Apocrypha. And some may be disappointed to see that the Apocrypha does not have the references. Now, there are several reasons this is possible. I haven't asked. I don't have official word, but I feel like I can give a pretty good guess. And I'm guessing, this is just a guess, is the reason is that referencing system probably doesn't exist. It'd have to be invented because this is a Protestant Bible largely, so they're not going to make a priority out of cross-referencing the Bibles. But there is an advantage to it. You do have much wider columns, so you're going to get more like 8 to 10 words per line here. This is a 30 GSM paper. It is overcast stitched on both sides. I did check. So that is going to make sure this thing holds together really nicely. But in the Apocrypha, there was something I saw that was extremely surprising because the Apocrypha was included in the 1611. It was taken out sometime around the 1500s. But check this out. I have never seen in a King James, 3rd Maccabees. 
Third Maccabees, it does have a book introduction. All the books have a small book introduction that looks similar to this in the Old and New Testament. So Third Maccabees, I don't know where this translation came from. Maybe somebody can tell me. I've kind of asked around, haven't been able to figure it out, but Third Maccabees is included. When you get into the New Testament, the words of Christ are in red, and when your notes and references spill over, they will spill over into that corner, which does make your columns kind of wonky here and there, but I don't see how else they could address that. This is an excellent layout. This is an excellent footprint size, and really, I don't see what they could have done to improve this. Once you get to the back, there's some features that I want you to see real quickly, and then I'll move you to some quick features in the front as well. They have a section on Between the Testaments, kind of telling you what the world was like when the apocryphal books were written. And then a neat little article here on the history of the Red Letter Bible. I thought that was cool. If you're interested, why do we have red letters and why is Thomas Nelson so committed to them? Here's your answer right here. And then we have 30 days of getting to know God, 30 days of getting to know Jesus. Then real quickly moving to the front, of course you have your About the Bible. Then you have an About the Apocrypha. And they have a little section on how to study the Bible. So it's got some extra little study tools. Really nice to have this in the King James, in the comfort print, in a modern layout. My understanding is the one that was done in the 1960s was not anywhere near laid out as good as this one. So this is a great option. Again, it's available in Leather Soft if you want to check that out. I have all those links in the video description. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus, son. This is your Nicholas Worth.